Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorn, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. In today's podcast, we will be talking with a gentleman who has run their family-owned ranch with his father for many years. Uh, They are located in Stockdale, Texas. He's been breeding and raising longhorns for the past 19 years. Um, And when working cattle, he uses the phrase, the cow never wins. And he's currently the treasurer for the Butler Online for Charity. So welcome, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So your sale's coming up pretty soon. What's Mm -hmm. the date and location? So the location is uh, Lockhart, Texas, and it'll be September 4th. Um, So that's just about a week away. It is. Perfect. It's a nice long weekend for people to go to a Longhorn sale. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Can you give us the rundown of the schedule of events for the weekend? So the cattle will start arriving Friday morning, um, you know, throughout the day. Uh, Folks start, you know, they start showing up and looking at the cattle. um, um, Usually about five o'clock, everything's there. So, you know, if you want to get there early, just to, you know, get a sneak peek at the lots and, you know, you can certainly do that. Um, And then a lot of folks too end up going to, eat barbecue for dinner that night um so you know friday night is kind of just hanging out and getting to see everyone that you haven't seen for a while and then uh saturday you start viewing cattle as early as eight um lunch at 11 a.m will be served uh, so that's also barbecue so i mean the theme is really barbecue for the butler sale on labor day um and then the sale starts right at 12 um and as you know and a lot of folks already do. We have a, a large variety of donated items that sell before the cattle. So uh, they'll start with that at 12 o'clock and then get it right into the cattle right after that. Perfect. Well, one of the things I always look forward to when I go to the Butler sale is the uh, smorgasbord of snacks. Absolutely. I'll have there. I don't think there's another sale that has as many good goodies as what you all do. Absolutely. And they travel from all over the country. So uh, there delicious every last one of them is delicious well great great yep they'll there'll be plenty of that too this this year <laughs> good um so the sale host do you want to talk about who's maybe in charge of the sale so the two sale hosts are Casso Ketty and Michael McLeod they have been sale hosts since the beginning um and you'll still see them at the sale actively participating with it um Casso will still be reading the pedigrees and hosting the meeting on Friday night and uh, Michael will be in the ring and he will be the first person you see when you show up to deliver your cows. So um, they're still there, but there's so many folks that, you know, step up and really help out, uh, especially with COVID last year, we had to, um, you know, really kind of spread out and a lot of people had to step up and do just, you know, as small of a task as it may be, but, Mm -hmm. you know, as far as like, putting out hand sanitizer, you know, something as small as that is a huge help. So um, there's a lot of people I could name, but it wouldn't be fair because I'll forget plenty of them. So um, our two main hosts, though, is Casso and Michael, and um, they'll certainly be there and we'll talk to anybody that wants to meet them. And how many years have they had the sale? This is going to be the 24th annual sale. Wow. So we're really hoping for next year to be number 25. Um, you know, it's been Labor Day since year one in 1998, and so we're looking forward to the 24th. Nice. We'll have to have a, a big celebration to celebrate the 25th year next year. Absolutely. So why do you choose to have a, the futurity with the sale? So the futurity is, you know, the idea of the futurity was really to promote the sale. Um, you know, as you know, the, you know, a lot of folks know that the futurity is kind of already happened. Um, And so, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of new breeders out here and, you know, a lot aren't aware of just like the Butler breed or the Butler family is really what it is. 
um, you know, being one of the original seven families in Longhorns, it's, you know, the only one that's really actively trying to keep it pure blood. So to have a futurity that's just that and showcase what these breeders have been doing for years um, is great. And it's a great promotion for the sale. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, you may not see an animal that's in the futurity, but you can see something similar in the sale. So, um, and then we decided to make it online. Um, you know, being at a sale that's 24 years old, um, you know, you have people that don't travel as much anymore. Um, this is a way for them to not have to travel and leave their families or if they have another job, they're able to still participate and, you know, from the comfort of their own home. So the online thing has been really great for our group. Um, and we've been able to get other breeders that, you know, maybe they have one or two butler heifers or cows. They're able to participate as well just because it's online. So that was really the kind of the main thing is to, you know, to promote the sale and to promote the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And if I remember right, the awards from the Futurity will be given out on Friday? Yes, yes. Um, so we have Grand Champion Buckles. Um, there's a prize for Reserve Grand Champions. So this is the first year we're doing Reserve Grand Champions. Um, this is also the first year that we're going to be um, celebrating a winner for miniature um, winners. So um, as you may know, and a lot of uh, miniature breeders might know, the Butler sale is probably one of the biggest sales for them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we decided to add them to the futurity and this will be the first year we get to um, present them with a, an award. And um, so, yeah, that'll be Friday, right, be you know, right before, right after, you know, kind of the meeting uh, for this. Love what you're hearing? Be sure to check out our pickup truck confessions. It's a video series where we hop in the truck or a rental car and interview a variety of breeders about what drives their passion for their livestock how they got started in the breed of their choice, marketing tips, and more. And now back to the podcast. Um, and how many consignments do you have in the sale this so, year? This year, there's 67 uh, total lots. Um, now there's 12 lots that are pins of twos. And so at the Butler sale, and it's been like this for as I can remember, it's um, the year before the, you know, the, the year before the sale. So if it's a 2020 heifer, you can put a pin of two together. And so we're going to have 12 of those. So there's 67 lots, but you know, you'll have 12 double lots. Nice. And there's also two bulls going to be offered as well. So okay. a good offering this year. Are there any standout consignments that you want to talk about? Well, if anyone's looking for young heifers, this is your sale. Um, anything from three, you know, one to three years old, that's probably half the sale. Um, people really stepped up and um, consigned their foundation females, um, at least stuffed out of their foundation. Uh, it's very important and it, they seem to be pretty big hits. Um, Johnny and Missy Hicks, uh, they consigned like an 80 inch twist, like a triple twist cow. Um, she looks really nice. I think she'll turn some heads. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hal and Betty Meyer can sign a really nice complete package cow. Um, yeah, so there's, there's quite a few. And like I said, if you're looking for some young heifers, this is your sale. Do you remember any of the highest selling cows from years past? I, uh, yeah, I know probably most of them, um, you know, some that stand out. We had a evening star sold. Um, I think she was, she sold for about 30,000. Nice. And, um, you know, interesting facts on her is it's, um, there was a three generation high seller um, between Dark Star, Evening Star, Five Star, you know, mom, grandma, and daughter kind of sold all for high sellers. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, I remember pretty much all of them. The last lot in the sale last year was our high seller. So you never know. Got to stick around till the end, huh? That's right. Absolutely. Okay. So for those people that are going to be coming to the sale, are there, what are there things to do around there that you would suggest? barbecue it's, <laughs> it's the capital of the world for barbecue so um you know there's a lot of places to choose from and you won't pick a wrong choice so you know there's that uh, like san marcus mm -hmm. 30 miles away and uh, austin's like 45 minutes so if 
you want to go and, you know, really kind of see some of the bigger towns, uh, those are some options. You know, there's the outlet mall and Austin has pretty much anything you can want to do. Um, I like to eat in Austin too. So you can go anywhere really eat. Say so Austin's got a pretty killer food scene. They do. They do. Um, and then um, a lot of folks really just hang around the sale barn. Um, you know, especially last year, not being able to see everybody. It's, I'd imagine this year more than ever, it's going to be just kind of catching up and visiting with one another again. Um, this sale really, um, one of the things I really liked about it is, you know, everyone feels welcome when they come to this sale. So uh, it's very family oriented and uh, we hope if there's any new breeders that want to come to it, feel welcome as well. And, um, so, yeah, I figure, you know, being around the sale barn would probably be the, the biggest thing for most folks. Yeah, that's what I've noticed in years past, too, is there's a lot of people that gather on Friday um, mm -hmm. and then on Saturday before the sale. So it's yeah. nice. You always have the tent set up outside, and it's a good place for people to get together. Yeah, and it usually rains Friday night, so we're hoping for that again. <laughs> Well, are there any last minute things that you want to say about the sale that we maybe didn't get to? We pretty much covered it. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing um, everyone at the Butler sale here coming up on September 4th, right? September 4th. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you.